We're live. We're live. We're live. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. What's going on? I hope everybody's doing all right. A bang. What's up, Rusty, my friend? How are you? Jersey Red. Joshua. Hello, Larry. What's up? Uh, Scott, what's going on? Welcome back. Steven NH, what's up? Welcome, welcome. Jake99, what's going on? Elias, good to see you as always. Happy Guitar Friday. Back at everybody. Russ, what's going on? Uh, what else we got here? Ray, what's going on? Welcome. Hope you're all well back, uh, back at y'all. MA, what's up? Glenn, what's going on? Jim Gregory, all right. Greetings back at you. Best part of the week. I love it. Laura, hello, hello. Good to see you. TC, <laughs> what's up? He's here. I love it. Kyle, how you doing? Azrael. How are you doing, Theodore? Good to see you, Chris. Oh, well, thanks so much. Kind words for last week. Uh, we're going to try again this week. All right. Andy, what's going on? Well, welcome, everybody. Appreciate you joining. Uh, this week, it's the acoustic focus, although everything is uh, transferable to the electric. Okay. King 50, what's up? Good to see you. All right. John, what's going on? Good to see you. HH, welcome. Good to see you. All right. We got lots of the regulars here. Excellent. Uh, for those of you just joining for the first time, maybe, uh, expand the description below the video. And there's a link to a PDF of the tabs that we go through each and every Friday at this time. Uh, tonight is no exception. We're on the acoustic tonight, but this can all be. Uh, Applied, hopefully, to the electric as well. A little more of an acoustic focus, but overall guitar skills, okay? And we usually alternate each and every week between the acoustic and the electric. Oh, there we go. Laura snapped the right in next day just before class. <laughs> Chop them all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Dave, what's going on? Good evening. Back at you. Uh, tonight, we're going to do an acoustic workout. Uh, we're here each and every week uh, doing some beginner to intermediate uh, focus type stuff. And uh, even if you're brand new to guitar and you find a lot of this maybe over your head a little bit, uh, you know, just stick with it. Try and, and take in what you can uh, because this is good stuff for uh, as you progress on the guitar, you might uh, be able to think back to something that we were talking about and make some connections sort of the way it happens. We just keep cumul accumulating all this knowledge, right? And all the skills, hopefully, okay? Uh, Elias just found 500 miles on GT, has a nice thumb strumming and finger picking. Yes, that's a good one, right? Is that Peter, Paul, and Mary, isn't it? I think so. Classic tune, right? All right. Well, welcome. I appreciate you all being here. Uh, HH got some new strings, so we're going to have some uh, nice, crispy, uh, high-end, clear-sounding uh, guitar stylings. <laughs> uh, Andres, hey, Mike, thanks for clarifying. Today's lesson will also apply to electric. I was wondering. Yes. Well, a lot of these skills, right, uh, while we, uh, you know, th these are things typically found on the acoustic guitar, Some a lot of these things that we go through, but uh, you can use all of this kind of stuff on uh, on electric as well. Let me just try and get this camera settled down a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what, why it's going in and out of focus here. So let me see. Hopefully I don't completely kibosh this, but, uh, let's see, just give me a sec to hopefully turn off an auto focus. All right. Off should be good. Hopefully. I don't know if that was any better. Probably made it worse. Well, there we go. Hopefully you can hear the guitar as well. Uh, it's for you. What's up? Good to see you. I'm having trouble going from A minor to G. Okay, so before we get into this, let's talk a little bit about uh, how you work on uh, chord changes. Okay, just a general sort of tips for chord changes that you find difficult, okay? In this case, A minor to G, okay? I'm gonna 
know what happened there. There we go. It was looking a little weird. All right. So uh, what you want to do is, first of all, just sort of plot out where your fingers are going, not even strumming or anything. Just try to just try to see where the fingers are going to make the movement and kind of plot it out a little bit. And then what you want to do is practice that with a really simple strum so you don't have to think about it very much. Usually just, you know, one, two, three, four downstroke kind of thing. Two, three, four. Staying in time, making that change. Two, three, four. And uh, as Azrael says, it's just practice, my man. So that's what you do. You go as slow as you need to go to order in order to stay in time. One, two, three, four, one, two. So you don't interrupt that flow of the strum and just keep going back and forth. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that helps a little bit, but yes, lots of repetition and do it as slow as you need to do it. That's the other thing. And uh, eventually it will feel much more natural with the repetition, you're programming those fingers to make those moves because they will give you lots of resistance at first. So you want to just keep burning that in and eventually get easier and easier. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Craig, what's going on? Hot one in Melbourne. We'll stay cool. Uh, TC is in 500 miles, a proclaimer song as well. Yes, I believe it is. 500 miles. Yeah, different song we're talking about. Uh, there was an old folk song of that, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, Kyle's asking, which is better to solo in, major or minor pentatonic? Well, what are you going for, right? It's a sound, okay? Um, minor pentatonic tends to sound a little bluesier. Major pentatonic sounds a little happier, right? It's a flavor, okay? So uh, that's a wide ranging topic right there. Um, tr just give the sort of short answer there. It just depends. It depends on what you're going for. Each of those have a really specific sound, okay? Matthew, what's up from Edmonton? My birthplace. Welcome. I love it. Glenn B found three here without you uh, by three doors down that you're working on. Excellent. We got some three doors down on the site. Uh, HH, I'm working on a song with hammer on and pull offs. What size of pick do you recommend? Oh my goodness. Uh, again, personal preference, uh, on the, uh, you know, the only sort of differences I do with the pick, you know, I'm just doing like a regular kind of pick size. Like I don't, I don't do the really shred small ones and, uh, I'll do a thinner pick for the acoustic around a 0.7 millimeters, I guess. And then around one millimeter on the electric, just uh, to have a little more uh, aggressiveness if I need it. Um, but that's really it. It's it's super personal preference. Just, uh, you know, just uh, try a bunch and just see which ones that you bond with a little bit. That's what I would say for that. Okay. And Laura just flipped the pick inside the sound. <laughs> I hate when that happens. You got to shake it out. <laughs> All right. Uh, Matthew, yes, some great tips, you know, practice, practice, practice. It really does. You know, repetition goes slow and repetition. What's up, Donna? Great to see you <laughs> and rusty, a little bourbon helped rusty. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to our warm up here. Uh, exercise one, a what's up, Robin. Good to see you. All right. Uh, bluegrass scale. Don't be scared off by that at all. The bluegrass scale, uh, for lack of a better term of what the scale is, it's basically a major pentatonic scale with one added note. So I'm talking about exercise 1A, and I'm just going to play it for you, the first line here. Okay. So what I like about this warm-up is that uh, well I played I played it just ascending I guess I should play it descending let's do that one more time okay. all right so uh, it's basically if we're, we're in the key of G, the G minor or G major pentatonic sound is my girl, right? Okay. 
Okay, but we're adding an extra note. We're adding a chromatic note in between the second note of the scale and the third note of the scale. And specifically, when we talk intervals, right? We're starting with the root, which is G. The open A string is the second or the two. And you've got the second fret of the A string is the three or specifically the major three, okay? And in between, you've got either the sharp two, but we actually refer to this one as the flat three or the minor third, okay? So it's going root two, flat three, major three. And so what you've got is a minor third and a major third mixed in there, okay? And so uh, sort of the relative minor of this is actually the blues scale, okay? That it gives you a flat five. That's sort of the idea. For the major pentatonic scale, we have this chromatic note that adds sort of this bluegrass country flavor, right? And it's the mixing of the minor and the major third. So I've got root, second, flat three, major third. And then I've got five, six, and then the octave. Okay, and then it just repeats up here, right? Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, yes. So, yes, uh, actually, Robin, this is the G run, okay? Okay, it's played a little bit differently. Might be played with a little more of a, you know, we're going to get to that actually in the second part of this warm up, okay? So, one of the things I want you uh, to think about when you're doing this warm up is all down ups, keeping your down and ups consistent, because as you can see, sometimes we've got even number of notes on a string, and sometimes we have an odd number of notes on the strings. And so your tendency will always be to start a, a new string with uh, like a downstroke. And in this case, you can't do that. You have to start the next string on an upstroke in a few cases, right? Especially that second note. Okay. So all it does is it just gives you a great training ground to burn in that alternate picking down, up, down, up, down, up. And once you do that to where you don't have to think about it, it's super useful for most things. Okay. So that's built into this exercise and also just the sound of that bluegrass scale. Okay. Just adding an extra note to the major pentatonic scale. Right. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, TC, descending sounds way better than ascending. Well, actually, we're going to do uh, the next one's ascending, and you'll recognize it a lot more of that G run kind of sound that uh, Robin was talking about. All right. Excellent. Uh, exercise 1B then, moving on. We're going to move to the key of E, but play the same scale, but we're going to add in, if you can see the, uh, the, the little uh, bracketed thing above the writing of exercise 1B. It's telling you that we're going to a shuffle rhythm. Okay, that's what that means, is instead of straight time where we're just one and two and three and four and, okay? And we're going to add a shuffle, which means the, the upstroke is gonna move closer to the next downstroke. So one and two and three and four, and that shuffle groove, right? And here's... Okay, so we're actually doing this run in three octaves, okay? You can see we're playing a little bit of a different, we're not just going straight up the scale, we're adding the, in that, uh, you know, two, four, two on the A string going to, and then starting it again on the next octave, okay? So you've got all the notes of the bluegrass scale. And then boom, we're going to start it again. All right. So think of this in three chunks. Each bar in exercise 1B, that's where, what we're going through, has the notes from one octave of this scale. Okay. What else you'll notice is that once we get to the octave, second fret of the D, we have to do a position shift from the second fret to the fourth fret to do the chromatic part. But if you can kind of visualize, you know, we're using open strings, but 
the sort of shape of this is exactly the same, right? We're just transplanting uh, those frets up two frets and up two strings from where we started the octave lower. Okay. Only difference is now we have to play the, uh, uh, we have to actually fret the, the next E note, right? And then here again, now we're going to go up to the fifth fret of the B string for the third bar. The frets are the same. The only thing that's different is we had to adjust going up one extra fret on the B string because the B string's tuned flat, right? Still do the position shift to the seventh position. And then a final little slide up to that high E note with vibrato if you want to throw it in, okay? So you practice this and you add a little bit of speed. I like it. TC, James Hetfield from Metallica, for those of you who don't know, says foo to all of it and just go all down strokes all the time. <laughs> he has to do the upstrokes. Some of that, that thrash stuff is so fast, you got to go with the upstrokes sometimes, right? The really fast stuff. All right. So there's our warm up. Okay. Uh, go slow with it if you have to at first. And it's just a great way to get the fingers going, great way to kind of burn in alternate picking a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about strumming. So we're going to do lots of strumming exercises actually this week. Um, so I'm starting sort of uh, pretty simple and sort of introducing a little bit of challenges as we go. So we have a chord progression here, uh, exercise two, which we're going to go with the open D chord, right? And let's look at what our strum is, which we are actually going to going to continue through this whole exercise okay so uh i'm gonna go uh you can see sort of the four chunks on the staff of the written notes which sort of give you a clue as to uh you know sort of what the rhythm is okay the second clue is also the markings above the tab which uh looks like sort of a stapler pointing down or a staple pointing down what's up danny Thanks for joining. And uh, a V, which will means your upstroke, right? So the staple pointing down is the downstroke or down strum. And the other one is the upstrum, right? Upstroke. So that's giving you a clue as well. So we've got quarter notes. So one, two, three, four for the downstrokes, but we have upstrokes in between after the third and fourth beats. So now it's going to be one two, three, and four, and, or down, 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 up, down, up. Okay. So let's make it to our, uh, put it to our chord now. Open D. One, two, three, and four, and down, 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 up, down, up. Okay. Nice and relaxed. Arm is just perched sort of on the top bout of the guitar here. What I'm doing is getting this motion going. This is an eighth note strumming rhythm right here, but I'm only striking the strings on the downstrokes for the first two, but I'm still doing the motion, right? That's how I keep time. And then on the last two, I want to hit the strings on the upstroke as I'm coming back. So that takes a little getting used to if you're, if you haven't done a lot of this, right? So just go slow with it. Next chord is an A chord. So that's the second fret of the D, G, and B. Open A string, open high E string. Okay. I curl my thumb around to give it a little bit of flesh on that low string just to make sure it doesn't ring out, okay? All right, Action Stack's got a great question. Right hand technique, I find my strumming is sloppy and awkward on the way up. Okay, so just let's be intentional about this and let's slow it down a little bit. Okay, just stay on one. Uh, unless you use a very soft pick, well, 
That could be uh, interesting. So if you want to break through that, use the thicker picks and really practice and be intentional about it. And how you do that is stay on one chord, go nice and slow. And you sort of, usually with an upstroke, you'll have to adjust the way that you come back up to get the strings because it's a little bit of a, it's a, well, it's a totally different motion than how it feels going down. Okay, you almost have to sort of dig in a certain way and bring that up. So uh, what I what you want to try and do is try to make it as consistent as you can sounding as the downstroke, right? Now, what I recommend is a metronome or a drum groove or something that you can slow down so that you can practice this nice and slow. And that's what it takes is the repetition and just being intentional about it. Okay. If you give it five to 10 minutes a day, within a week, you're going to start to see some progress. You're going to see uh, maybe it tightening up a little bit, not as sloppy, feels a little more natural, not as awkward. Okay. But you sort of have to fight through that nice and slow and just be intentional. Make that adjustment on the arm so that you can get it sounding consistently or very close to the way it sounds on the downstroke. Okay. Hope that helps. Right above the 2A exercise title, what does the double note equal double note notation mean? So what we've done is in the previous exercise, we did a shuffle. Okay. So that's when it gave you the, uh, um, the eighth note and then the eighth note triplet kind of uh, marking to tell you it's a shuffle. So now all I've done is just told you, okay, now we're back into straight time. So this is straight time. The two eighth note equal two eighth note just means equal up, uh, equal one and two and three and four and straight time. Okay. That's what that is. All right. Excellent. All right. So uh, just adding a chord progression to that strum. So take as much time as you need, particularly if you're working on your strumming, trying to get the upstrokes not as sloppy, not as awkward feeling, more natural feeling and consistent sounding, be okay with staying on one chord, okay? Once you've kind of got it burned in and it feels good, now we, we bring in the chord changes, okay? So I'm going to play through uh, the first line. It starts with D. That's what we're going for there. Just nice straight ahead. Okay. But it is, it takes some intentional intention. I don't know if that's a word. It takes some being intentional for it to sound good, right? We want, you know, we want to play and sound good. So you have to work on that, even though if you think it's, it's kind of simple, be honest with yourself. Does it sound good? What can I do to imp in, improve it and make it sound nice and tight, consistent, solid timing, all that kind of stuff. All right. So that just comes from uh, lots of repetition and going as slow as you need to go. Can you show us how much your pick protrudes from the grip? So I've got about that much, maybe. Okay. Sort of a, you know, you're almost at a, not, you know, a little bit more than 90 degree angle. And I've got the tip sticking out there. Okay. telling you about, uh, we were talking a lot about muting last week, so I want to try to bring those tips in, right? So on the A chord, I've got the thumb wrapped over so that that E string gets muted. C chord, for the C chord, what you want to do is get used to sort of positioning that C note with your ring finger so that it's just, the tip of it is just touching that low string. So even if I strum that low string, it's not ringing. Okay. Igor, what's up? 
Nice to see you. Thanks for joining. All right. Exercise 2B, what I want to do is add just a very simple embellishment to it. So I'm going to play through it and I'll talk about what we're doing here. Very simple embellishment, but really adds a lot, right? A little goes a long way with this kind of stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm just lifting the second fret of the high string or the high E string off to the open string on the third and fourth beat of the bar. Okay. Coming back in for the upstroke. I know I didn't do the upstroke there, but... adds a lot. What we're doing is we're replacing the major third of the chord, which is F sharp, with an E, okay, which is makes it a sus2. That's the two in relation to the chord, right? Classic move, okay? We're actually doing the same thing with the A chord. The major third is on the B string second fret, and I lift my pinky up. going from the B string, open B, to C sharp. So again, a sus2 kind of embellishment. Same thing with the C chord. Okay. I've got the major third on the second fret of the D string, and I'm lifting that up to reveal the open D string. Again, a sus2. G chord, same thing. This one is kind of low. It's on the A string second fret, right? I'm going to the open A string and uh, that can tend to get lost a little bit. So uh, you can get really intentional by just strumming the low strings on that, right? It tends to get lost if you've got all the strings going. Those higher, those brighter notes kind of overpower it a little bit, right? So that could be a lesson too, where, uh, you know, sometimes if you want to highlight a little embellishment within a full chord, sometimes it makes sense to just sort of strum around where that embellishment is. And you're more likely to have that push forward a little bit more. All right. So, yeah, very simple. Go, going for finding where the major third is in the chord and just moving that back and forth to the second note, which gives you a sus2. Classic sound, right? Makes sense. All right. Okay. Uh, Andre is asking, I tense up my hands, arms, and body more than I need, and I just can't help it. It keeps me from making progress. Have any tips? Again, um, you just need to try and be intentional about being as relaxed as you can. Okay. And sometimes that's not possible at first when you're, you're just sort of straining to make whatever it is happen on the fretboard a little bit. <laughs> Jersey's got a good tip as well. That's a side tip. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you, if you find yourself getting tense, right, you may need to have some sort of tension in there just to, you know, sort of, uh, somewhat get it under your fingers. But at some point in the process, what you want to do is start being intentional about. And breathing helps. I like that, Laura. Maybe taking a breath or two and going, okay, now I'm going to try and relax as much as possible and try to make it happen. Okay. And even if you don't get the result results that you're hoping for immediately, just trying that regularly. Okay. Um, I think that helps a lot, okay? And especially, yeah, if, if your muscles start getting tired and everything, shake it off, give yourself a break, all that kind of stuff, okay? But yeah, it's an intentional thing. It's, it's an exercise of being intentional. It's about 
you know, like our brains, especially when we're trying to learn stuff and, and internalize stuff, um, there's a lot going on. There's many things to pay attention to as you're trying to do it. And it's much more effective to just focus on one of the things at a time, right? That's why I say, okay, break it up. Work on the strum first. Don't even worry about the chord. Just keep one chord and just work on the strum until it feels natural. Okay, introduce chord changes, right? Now I know the chord changes. Okay, now I'm going to take the next couple minutes to just breathe a little bit and try to relax everything, okay? And do that for a couple minutes. And eventually you'll start to have that be a little more of a default where you don't have to be as intentional about it. It's something that you start to do automatically, okay? There you go. All good stuff. Thanks so much for the uh, for the for everybody chiming in for the tips. Yes, pick thickness is 0.71 right now. It's just what I happen to have. I like that range for the uh, acoustic guitar. A little bit of a lighter pick for an electric. I'll be around one millimeter. Okay. What gauge on the Martin strings, Matthew? Uh, just a regular 11 to 56. Okay. And, uh, I use the, uh, I don't know if you can still get these. Uh, they are, um, Ernie ball paradigms, I think, but I really weigh those sound on, on the acoustic. Uh, I think they're coated or something. Um, so they're a little more pricey, uh, but they tend to last a little bit longer and I think they have a really nice sound. So, uh, you might also be hearing, I've got it plugged into the, the uh, processor right here. So I've got some compression and some EQ going to kind of brighten it up a little bit as well. All right, exercise three, uh, arpeggiated riff. Let me play it and we'll talk about it a little bit. That's exercise three. And we've got some open strings, right? And basically just sort of uh, the sound of A major. But just moving that shape. So I've got uh, the second fret of the G and B, and I'm going to just move that up two frets. And now you've got, uh, I actually didn't do this quite correctly on the, uh, the chord uh, sound there. Um, by the way, yeah, Rusty, this is a lot of different songs, right? Like, uh, for one, that's the one I think about a little night ranger at first, but there's tons of other songs that sort of have this sound to it. That should actually read a B add 11 over a or slash a, cause we're not changing the bass note. We've still got an a in the bass ringing out. Okay. Uh, Night Ranger. I don't know if you've heard of that band. They had a song called Don't Tell Me You Love Me. Use, the, use those. Um. Okay. And uh, so th this is just coming out of a, it's sort of like a B sus chord. The add 11 is the open E string. And then it sounds kind of cool when you put it, when you keep the A on it. Okay. And then now we're getting to the sixth fret of the G, fifth fret of the B. So kind of coming out of this A major shape, right? We came out of the open shape. Now we're coming out of the bar chord shape, but just using two of the notes out of it on the G and B string. So you'll notice that we're kind of doubling up on the E note, fifth fret of the B string and the open high E string, right? Uh, If I move it up two frets, I'm going to have the same effect that I did going up two frets from the original one, okay? okay. Which is uh, eighth fret of the G, seventh fret of the B. Once again, a B at 11 over A or slash A. Uh, what it does, you start moving shapes around and combining it with open strings. Uh, you get a lot of interesting sounds, okay? And this one is really pleasing. It's a pleasing sound for sure. Okay. 
Uh, the other reason for slotting this in, I think, is just for arpeggiation picking practice because you, you have to string skip here a little bit. You're going from the open A string, but then up to the G string. And you'll see that I have uh, the downstroke and upstroke markings on the first bar, and that's just a suggestion. It's sort of what I default to to do something like this, but it's not uh, a strict thing that you have to adhere to. You can kind of pick this however uh, you'd like to that feels the most natural to you, okay? Um, but yeah, I, I generally like to, you know, when I know I'm going to change directions, I will telegraph it with the direction of the pick, right? So that's why on the B string, I'm doing an upstroke, and then I'm back to a downstroke, then I'm back upstroke on the high string, B string, but then a downstroke on the G, and then an upstroke back on the B. It feels natural to me. So once again, go slow. You notice that the picking pattern is the same in each bar, okay? Just straight eighth notes, okay? So if you need to get that under your fingers first, just stay on one chord and just do that for a couple minutes first. Nice and slow, again, just to, you know, get it programmed in a little bit. And, uh, you know, once you've got lots of repetition in that, start speeding it up. You know, let's see. Ah. All right, HH, yes, I did. Uh, gauge of strings, 11 through four, uh, 56, 11 through 56. And I use, uh, on the acoustic, I use, on this acoustic, I use the, uh, I believe it's Ernie Ball, the Paradigm strings, which are kind of like a coat, they're sort of a elixir. I don't know if you're familiar with those strings, but they're coated to last a little bit longer. I just like them. But, you know, can't, really go wrong with anything at Guitar Center, right? Exercise four, another strummed riff, okay? Ah, uh, yes, famous song, right? So let's look at, again, up top. Now we know this is a shuffle, okay? So instead of down, up, down, up, down, up, it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Let's look at that first bar. Okay, so we're introducing a few things. First thing is adding the pinky onto the D chord, third fret of the high string, and that's giving us a sus four now, because that's the four in relation to the root, going from the major third to the four. When you replace the, th the, the, the major third note in a major chord with the four, you get a sus four, suspended four. Another classic move. Now note on that upstroke, we have a tied rhythm there. So I'm just letting that ring out over the next beat and coming back in on the next upstroke. So keep this going, right? And remember, I've got that shuffle going. Now, if we speed that up a little bit to the tempo of the song. Right. Sort of the main uh, riff of that song, really, on one chord. Uh, the rest of this exercise shows you the rest of the chords kind of in most of this song. So uh, you kind of stick on that D riff for a while, and then you're going to go up to the G chord and play this. play that a little bit slower okay uh jake 99 talking about strings on amazon i i kind of second that i've actually i'm a little bit wary of buying strings and batteries off amazon to be honest i don't know what's up uh, i i I've heard that there are a lot of like counterfeit kind of products on Amazon that look like the real thing, but aren't necessarily. So just buyer beware if you're buying strings on Amazon. Uh, I always go to, uh, I always find that uh, Sweetwater or on Guitar Center, sometimes they have deals on strings, but Sweetwater has free shipping and they're usually pretty inexpensive. 
So, uh, or there you go. Supporting the local music stores. I like that. Action Stack. Good. Good one right there. All right. Okay. So we're going to a G chord with that same strum where we're uh, on the end of two. We're kind of leaving it ringing over the third beat and bringing it back in on the upstroke. And then I'm going to switch to bar chords. All downstrokes here, and I've got to cut them off because you'll notice the rests in between. So it's an eighth note strum and a rest. That's an eighth note rest. So I'm using some muting where I lift. I'm Because I've got bar chords, I don't have any open strings. So when I sort of relieve the pressure off of the frets, but not the strings, you see I'm leaving my fingers on the strings in that position, but just lifting off the frets, that works really well for muting in this case. Okay. C major bar chord, third position, root on the fifth string, right? And then the G major bar chord, third fret, low string is your root. Okay, up top, all right? All right. So let's put that together. All right. And to finish it off, we've got the second line here where it kind of does a little turnaround to a different chord. Cool stuff in here, okay? So uh, going back to the main riff and then B flat, C to D, okay? If you think about the key of D, which is uh, m almost all of this is in the key of D, but that B flat chord is not in the key of D, right? Um, key of D has a B note, not a B flat. So what's going on? And what's going on is what's called a uh, modal interchange. So just for that chord, we're borrowing a chord from a different key. And in this case, we're borrowing it from D minor, okay? D minor and also the C chord are from D minor. Uh, sorry, B flat and C are actually from the key of B, uh, sorry, D minor. All right, one more time. B flat major and C major are two chords that we're pulling out of D minor temporarily, right? Just to give a little bit of interest, a little bit of, you know, composer, composer's choice, songwriter's choice. And then once we get back to the D chord, we're back in the key of D major. Okay. This is called modal interchange and it's really cool. Sort of gives a different sound, right? Okay, in that bar, you'll notice the eighth notes that are eighth note triplets, right? And they're kind of, uh, you know, bracketed with a three through them, okay? So we're hitting triplets for every quarter note. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, okay? So we've got to strum a little bit more, dig in, right? We're going to hit a down, up, down on the first set of three, but then we're going to continue with an up, down, up on the next set of three, and then it's going to repeat, right? <laughs> And at the end, we just do a downstroke and cut it off because the rest of it is a, is a rest. So we're cutting it off. So that last little bit of exercise four. Okay. All right. So lots of stuff to dig into there. Remember, take each little chunk. Uh, you know, if it's something new and something challenging, take each little chunk one at a time. Spend some time just with that chunk. Go as slow as you need to go, lots of repetition, and you know, start stitching things together as you get more and more comfortable with each part. All right? Got lots of uh, um, suggestions for uh, strings and for retailers. I like it. Vision Guitar. I have actually ordered some stuff from Vision Guitar before on Reverb. What do we got? Long and McQuaid in, uh, in Canada. There's a Canada chain for you. I love it. Came out with a new Les Paul. Right on, Matthew. Excellent. Okay. Uh, 
Matthew's not a fan of the elixirs, but the Erna Ball and Martin Strings are my preference. Huge personal choice. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of got to just try stuff out till you find what you prefer. All right. <laughs> M.A., how is that a B flat? Yeah, if we're looking at this, uh, first fret of the A string, third fret of the D, G, and B. Okay? So that's a B flat note right there. Um, uh, and just the major bar chord shape. Okay? Does that make sense? I'm not sure if I uh, explained it. I was looking at it wrong. There you go. Yeah, first fret. And then the third fret of the D, G, and B. <laughs> All right. Exercise five. Okay, so uh, we haven't really done this on the acoustic uh, sessions, but I thought I would do it just for one exercise here. Let's go into drop D. Now, for those of you on an electric guitar where you've got some sort of locking system, this isn't really going to be possible. So you can approximate drop D by just sort of hitting the open D and open A strings and just avoiding the low string, okay? But it's obviously not going to sound quite as full. All right, what's a quick way to, to drop down? You can always use uh, your handy-dandy uh, tuner, you know, pedal tuner, uh, headstock tuner, right? But you can also... Once you get used to this, you get this going pretty quick. What you're looking for is to kind of hear where... Like it sort of wavers a little bit. And then you can find a spot where it settles down and it kind of, it's almost like it comes into. I don't know if you can hear that. You hear how it's, that, that's kind of like, that's called beating, where it kind of wavers. Okay. And then you can kind of just bring it up. I always bring it up. Okay, here's another one. You can try the harmonics. If you know what harmonics are at the 12th fret of the low string and A string. Sometimes you can hear that a little better. Here's another tip. D note fifth fret of the A string. And then just use those two strings. Try to get it so that they come into it, right? If you ever shoot it, you'll hear it. Glenn B got it in the first try. I love it. And, uh, you know, of course, if you need to tune just to check, you know, use your tuner to check. But it's a cool skill to be able to do that just by ear. So that's something that we can try and work on, right? Came up with this little exercise here. Let's see, something, you know, something you can do in drop D that's cool, okay? get that last one ah. okay it's really fun to do stuff like that in drop d okay so the first thing is you can kind of pedal on the low stuff and with the upstroke i'm doing some higher double stops meaning two notes at the same time So uh, you'll have to check out on Guitar Tricks, the opening strum to Hard Day's Night. <laughs> Can't remember it right now, but uh, I just reshot that, actually. It's going to be coming up on the site in glorious 4K, right? <laughs> so check it out. Double stops, 11th fret of the G, 10th fret of the B. That spells out a D major. I'm moving the same shape down two frets, so that's going to be like a, a C major. And then seven and seven on the G and B, that's back to D major, okay? And I'm gonna stay on the seventh fret of the G, but play, play around with that sus thing, right? If I've got seven and five on the G and B, that's a sus two, back to the D major. And then if I add the eighth fret on the B string, that's sus four, okay? So that's what those notes are up top. Now 
Now I'm going to a C, add nine. Okay, and then a G over B, so. Down, down, up, up, down. On that next down, which is the fourth beat of the bar, I'm actually moving to the next chord. And then it ties over the one of the next bar and comes in on the end of one and two. Cool little hammer on lick right here. Open A string, hammering onto the second fret and pulling off back to the open. Okay. Does the volume cut out when I'm playing, when I play loud? Yeah, that might be something. Let me try and not do that. Yeah, apologies for that. I got to get the audio sorted out a little bit. I think something strange is happening with my interface, so I might have to go back to uh, what we used to do that. Yes, Matthew, there is a YouTube video with Randy Bachman and in the intro of Hard Day's Night. Check it out. All right, so just a cool little drop D kind of example of some things you can do. Pedaling on the low strings, cool little. I like when you, you play off the uh, D chord. Now you can use the low string. And if you do that bluesy bend on the third fret of the low string, classic move, right? Now let's move it up. Okay, so I've got the seventh fret of the A string. Is the note that I'm coming up to and you can also a little bit tougher to hear on the harmonic you can definitely hear it on the note just check it with your open e chord boom you're back in standard right uh exercise six uh thought we'd do a little gordon lightfoot uh in six eight time okay so uh again we're going to come up with a strum here in six eight six eight we're going to have two groups of three one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Where the accent is on the one and on the fourth beat. And you'll see those accents. Um, we want to dig in a little bit with our strums on the first and fourth beat of every bar, okay? Strums a little bit uh, different here because we've got an upstroke, um, even though on every eighth note, we're doing a downstroke. But there's just one instance where we're going to throw an upstroke in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we think about going slow here. By the way, this is an A sus two. Open A string, second fret of the D and G, and then the open B string gives us our sus sound. Open high E string, okay? And once you got that strum together, you want to dig in a little bit more on the first and fourth beat. So it might sound like this. And that you kind of feel that lilt of the one, two, three, four, five, six when you do that. Okay. Next bar. Interesting. Uh, G triad on the D, G, and B strings, fifth fret, fourth fret, third fret, with the A still in the bass and the open E string up top. Okay? So this part of the chord from the G note is G6, we're adding a six onto it, over A or slash A. Okay? Same strums. Going to an open D. So if I play the whole thing together, it sounds like this. Okay. 
we can even go a little bit faster. I think it's a little bit faster, the original version of this, the uh, wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. And actually, if you go to that song, I think it's a capo on two playing these shapes. So I didn't bother with the capo here, but uh, just in case you want to play along with the song. Running out of time here. Uh, exercise seven. Got two more to go here. Uh, I was listening to a uh, country playlist a little bit, and I heard this uh, Luke Combs song with a cool acoustic guitar figure in it with some sliding and, you know, just using. Uh... Yes, TC, the capo on two makes a huge difference. It'll sound right to you for sure. <laughs> MA, you have a good gait. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the uh, noise cancellation, I don't even know where it's coming from. So uh, we might have a different audio setup next week. I'll have to see. I don't think this is working very well. I'm really trying trying to get it, get it nice and crisp and good, but something's going on with that. So uh, we'll work on that. I promise it'll be better next week. Okay, so exercise seven. I'm going to play through it. Sounds like this. So, uh, just taking this G shape, right? Third fret of the low string, third fret of the B string, and we've got the open G string. And we're just going to move our fingers in this same shape up to the seventh fret. But we're going to slide. Okay, so you sort of have to hold that note for a bit and then slide it up to seven, but you're also. Uh, I think it sounds a little cleaner if you pull uh, the, the finger off the B string and then put it back down once you get up there. Then up to the eighth fret. Okay. Up to the tenth fret. Pretty cool. I think that's a really simple, but it sounds really unique. It sounds really cool, right? Like, So just working on slides even if you just worked on the on the low. That could be an exercise all on its own, right? Okay. Work on your dexterity on that, your accuracy. All right. Let me just plug this in for a sec here. All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't don't know what's going on with the sound. I'm gonna work on it this week. All right, we'll see you Friday with hopefully some better sound. Uh, exercise eight, just a funky strum on the acoustics, nice and fun, right? Um, I'm gonna do an A minor seven shape, and uh, that's uh, wow, sounds like there we go. Something's out. A little better okay so the fifth fret of the low string curling to mute the a string and then just barring down with another finger from the d string all the way up on the fifth fret okay that's an a minor seven okay so now we're going to get our down up down up going for 16th notes one e and uh two e and uh three e and uh four e and uh, what i'm doing is just I've got my fingers ready to be pressed down, but I'm just holding the strings. I'm not pressed down. So it's muted, right? One E and a, two E and a, and then I'm gonna press down when it says to in the rhythm. So. Okay, one more time. A little bit faster. 
That's what we're going for. All right. Second. Seventh fret. Okay. Same shape. B minor seven. Very similar. But coming down chromatically, down to six, down to five. So if you put it all together, sounds like this. stuff you have to shake it out after all right but uh the key keep this going down up 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 and just pressing down when you want to get the chord okay all right akilan is it possible to demonstrate a simple chord melody arrangement well we are out of time tonight it's a great uh um suggestion and i will work it in in the coming weeks okay um, in the meantime, check out the channel, go to the live videos from the past. They're all up on uh, the Guitar Tricks YouTube channel and look back on some of the acoustic workshops and some of the finger picking workshops and you'll find some. OK, we just didn't have any tonight, but there are uh, a number of them that I've done in the past, but we will do them moving forward as well. OK, so I hope you keep tuning in and I hope you uh, check out the uh, previous live sessions that are on the channel. All right. Thanks, HH. Uh, that's very cool sound. I, I agree. I love it too. Steve, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Jersey Red, Rusty, thanks so much for holding it down as always on the comments. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Jake99, yeah, whichever fingers feel uh, the most natural to do those minor sevens, uh, go with it. Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I don't want to miss saying goodbye to everybody. All right. Uh, Joshua, thank you. Laura, Laura, the faster the better on that. Yeah, it's fun to go fast on it. But remember, start slow. You got to make sure you're doing it right. Russ, appreciate it. Thank you. Zane, thank you. Theodore, Mark, thank you. Jake99, thanks so much. Alonzo, Action Stack, thank you. Glenn B, thank you, sir. Robin, thanks so much. Scott, thank you very much. Uh, Joshua, no problem. Thank you. TC, thank you. Thanks for being here. Andre, Akilin. Laura, excellent. Loving it. Keep at it. Thanks for being here. Ian, thank you. Igor, thanks. Mexico City, all right. Andy, thank you. Jim, thanks so much. King50, thank you. HH, thank you. Larry, thanks so much. Chris, thanks. Uh, Jim Gregory, thank you. Jody1, thanks a lot. MA, thank you. John, <laughs> loving it. Gerald. Love the A minor seven shape and number eight. There you go. Go with it. All right. <laughs> Matthew, thank you. Everybody, take care. Have a great weekend. Have a great next week. And uh, we'll see you on the electric same time next week. All right. Take care, everybody. Appreciate it. See you.